Okay, so in the previous video, I showed you how to install Fedora Linux and in particular the Budgie Atomic version. So that's what I'm running here. And in today's video, I'm going to show you the setup steps I normally do after installing a new operating system. So the first thing I normally do is set up the hardware uh, because that's the thing that you need the most, really. Now, you'll see here I'm plugged into an Ethernet connection, which always helps. Uh, because it means you've always got an internet connection. So if I go to Firefox, which is installed by default, you can see it goes to the Fedora project page to start with, but I can go to google.com and you can see Google's working. So you, you can tell straight away there's an internet connection. So that's the very first thing I do. Have I got an internet connection? Because if you've got an internet connection, you can then solve most problems. For instance, now with the emergence of AI, you you can go to Gemini or you can go to ChatGPT. If you have a problem, type it in there and you can usually solve whatever problem it is you have. So with that in mind, um, if I did want to connect to Wi-Fi, I can go down here and you can see if I right click, um, it's got my Wi-Fi networks and you've got the available networks. So my Wi-Fi works straight away. Uh, so the next thing I'll want to try and do is set up my Bluetooth speaker and so down here we've got the bluetooth icon and you can see it's got nothing paired so i clicked on the little icon there and now it's searching for devices and you can see it's actually found my bluetooth speaker so i'm going to click on this connecting and it says connected is it going to disconnect or is it actually going to work straight away if it stays connected i'm going to be fairly impressed with that it does stay connected. So the next thing I'm going to try is setting up my printer. So just type the word print from the start menu and click on printers. And it's found my printer set up straight away. So that is actually very impressive. Within a few minutes, I've got my printer, my Bluetooth and my Wi-Fi all working. So generally, that's all the hardware I have um, with any installation. So I'm now good with that. The next step is to install all the software I need. So if I go down here and I search for software, you can see because it's Budgie, it's installed the GNOME software uh, manager because Budgie is kind of based on GNOME. It's just got a different look and feel to it. And you'll see it will download the software catalog. Now, when I first booted up, it was doing this and it took a while. So on your first boot, it will take a while and the updates take a while. And the other thing I noticed was when I rebooted the first time, it installed the updates, almost Windows style. And then in the boot menu, um, it actually had a new version of Fedora there. So this is where the atomic thing comes into play. So what it does is it stores a copy of your current system um, and it makes sure it's got all the updates in place and it will basically update your system. And once it's happy that everything's updated, it will revert to that new version. So you'll always have a working version of your system. So you can't have a CrowdStrike type problem because your system will always have a running version available. Well, I would say this downloading software catalog, I mean, I only did this about 10 minutes ago and it's still taking a while to load now. But you can see it's now loaded. So we're now going to install the software that I need to use. Now, last month I used Firefox entirely without using Chrome at all. So I'm going to stick to that, but I am going to see if it's available in case you want to use it. So if I click up here and I type Chrome, because flat packs are available, Chrome is available. And equally, I should be able to find Steam if I wanted to and spell it correctly, of course. And you can see it's there. Now, I don't use Steam on my computer. I, I, I'm an Xbox gamer. Um, so I'm going to leave that alone. Um, but what I do want, um, before we start, I guess it would be a good idea to see what's already installed on the computer so we can see what we actually need. So if I click down here and you click on all, you can see everything that's installed. Now, these are the categories. So you'll be able to see under each category what's installed so you can see what you need. So by default, we've got a few accessories. We've got a file manager, we've got the disk utility, we've got a screenshot tool, and we've got a basic notepad style editor called uh, gedit. Uh, then under internet, we've only got Firefox. So we've got no mail program or 
transmission for BitTorrent or anything like that. And the sound of video, OBS Studio, which I downloaded and installed previously so I could record this video. And then we got some system tools. So really you've got a bare bone system. So you have to install all the software yourself. So the very first thing I am going to install is LibreOffice. And that's there. I can click that and I can click install. Now, the great thing, of course, about using the budgie desktop like this instead of the main Fedora is that I'm still on X11, which means my screen recorder works properly. But anyway, uh, LibreOffice is installed, so we can now go down here. And under Office, we have all the LibreOffice suite. So we're going to go back. And the next thing we're going to install is an audio player. There's plenty available, but my personal favorite is Rhythmbox. And that is there. So we just click install. And that installed incredibly quickly. Let's see if that actually did install. And it did. So that's great. So let's come back to here. Um, I'm going to install Shotwell, which is a photo manager. Click install there. And again, that installed incredibly quickly as well. So if I go into graphics now, you'll see Shotwell is there. We'll come back out of there. And we are going to install Evolution. Evolution is a mail client. Now you can either go for Evolution or you can go for Thunderbird. I personally like Evolution. So I'll click install there. And again, that installed very quickly. So we go back out and the next thing so we've got a mail client we've got a photo manager we've got an audio player and we've got an office suite what we need now is a media player so we could go for something like vlc so here we are vlc here so we can just click on that and there's a flat hub available but that's all so we're going to have to install that version and that's now installed as well so the next one we're going to install is GIMP, which is a image editor. So we click there, click install. Now you'll see some of them are flat packs and some of them aren't. Some of them come from Fedora and they're much smaller. Um, it doesn't overly matter due to the immutable nature of the operating system. It should all just work seamlessly. But the GNU image manipulation program is the closest thing you get to something like Photoshop for Linux. So that's that installed. The next thing I need is a video editor. So I'm going to go for Caden Live. Interestingly, I always used to use OpenShot, but um, I've really got used to Caden Live and I, I like the features on it. So click that there. And we click install. OK, so that's installed and I think that's everything I need installed for now. I've got a mail program, I've got an office program, I've got audio, video, picture managers, I've got an a image editor and I've got a video editor. That's all I need generally and I've obviously got a web browser with Firefox. So that's everything I need. So what I want to do now before I start setting up these programs is if I go into disks, you can see I've got two disks available. Now I installed to this disk here, which is there. And on this disk, I've got a all my files. And you can see it's asking for a password. And it's got a backup of all my files on it from the last month on. And I've also got all my music, document, pictures, videos as well. So what I want to do is I want this to be available at boot time. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to edit the mount options. I'm going to take ownership for a start. And the other thing I'm going to do is edit the mount options. And you can see it's mounted at system startup. So we click there like that. So what I'm going to do now is click OK and type in my password. And now it should um, mount at startup. And so we're going to test that out before we do anything else. So as you can see, I've rebooted and Gary stuff has appeared straight away. And I can go into that without having to 
uh, enter a password. So that's great. Uh, one thing I don't particularly like thus far is the boot time. Uh, I don't know if it's because I've installed lots of software, but it, boot time is particularly slow. You get stuck at the Fedora Spinny logo quite a while. But other than that, everything else is looking fine. So let's um, set up some of this software. So first one, let's do evolution. Uh, do you want to make it your default mail client? Well, yes, it's the only one that's installed. And then you just work your way through these settings here. So I'm going to blur this out. So it's essentially going to ask for your email and your reply to information, stuff like that. The only one you really need to fill in is this email address here. You can do all the other stuff later on. Uh, but the email address is going to connect to your email provider. And if you've got a large one like outlook.com or gmail.com, then it will connect quite easily. Now you fill in that form and when you get to the end of it, if you're using someone like Google's Gmail account, it will try and connect to that. It will open it up and you'll be asked to authenticate via the web browser. And then it will ask you to, if, if you're using two-factor authentication, it will ask you to um, accept that on your mobile device or whatever device is set up for two-factor authentication. And then that, that should be it. It will then ask you, um, I, do you want to allow Evolution to have access to your mail? And you just have to say yes if you want to use that. I'm not going to show you that because I don't want to show you my personal email address, um, but we'll, we'll carry on. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the photo manager. So we can do that here. And it's asking where, where it should import your pictures from. I'm going to turn that off because I want to set my pictures from a different place. And I'm actually going to take it from Gary stuff. And um, we've got this pictures folder here. And we can click OK there. So you can either copy the photos to your library, which removes it to the photos folder, or you can import in place. I'm just going to import in place. I see no benefit in copying them when it's a permanent drive anyway. And you can see it's important years and years worth of photos. Whilst that is doing that, there's no harm in then doing rhythm box at the same time. I can spell it, and there you can see that there. And again, that's going to want to import songs. So we can go up here, we can go to preferences, and we go to music, and where are you getting the music from? I'm going to click browse, I'm going to go to other locations. It doesn't actually um, have Gary stuff as an option. So that's a, a bug within Rhythm Box, I believe. So I did the obvious thing and copied all the music into my actual music folder. And so essentially all I did was, I uh, went into this folder here, Control A, Control C, went into the music folder, right click and paste. That's all I did uh, if you wanted to do that yourself. And now I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go in. Going to go into here, go into preferences, and you see it's the music folder. So all I have to do is go to import. And in here you can see I've got all these tracks coming through. And once I've finished listing, I'm going to just click the import button. So here we go, I'm just going to hit the import button and it's done and now all my music is available to me. So I can close that down. So that's all my software set up. So it's all hardware, all software set up. Now the only thing I want to do is change this wallpaper. It really doesn't do anything for me. Sorry the person who drew that, but um, it's a bit too basic for my liking. So we can right click and go to budgie desktop settings. And we can go into desktop. And there's various things you can change here. So under style, you can change your widgets to dark or light, um, icon style, cursors, notification position. So notifications are going to appear up there. Uh, you can choose dark theme or light theme. So by default, it's dark. I thought that would change as soon as I 
clicked it. It doesn't really do much. Um, then you've got, uh, ah, maybe if I turn that and that off. It's a bit lighter, I guess. And then you've got animations on or off. If you want to save performance, you'll turn the animations off. Under the desktop, you've got desktop icons. Do you want them on or off? So if you don't like things on your desktop, then you can also choose if you have got the icons on, whether you want, like, for instance, got Gary stuff there. Do I want that? I don't actually. I don't like it being there. Home directory. I don't mind that being there. Rubbish bin is good to be there. Click policies on single click. I actually prefer double click. Um, so I'm going to leave that there. You've got icon sizes and number of virtual desktops is set to four. Something we'll go into later. Then you've got fonts, uh, Raven. I'm not sure what this is. Um, things like calendar settings, sound and media controls. I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, widgets. So I guess that's down here somewhere. Yes, it's probably that down there. And you got uh, Raven position. I'm not sure what that is. I assume that's this down here. Anyway, we've got Windows down here. Um, other things you can change. So panels, you've got the bottom panel. Ah, so Raven is this trigger here. Ah, so that's what your your Raven widgets are. These things here. So you've got apps and devices and notifications. So that's what that is. That's what Raven is. And then you've got all your bar settings here. And you can change the position of the bar if you want. So you can have it at the top. Have it left. Have it right. Have what I prefer at the bottom. I think it's quite nice where it is. And you can set it to dock mode if you want, so it compresses like that. If you are going to have it compressed like that, um, maybe a bit larger. But I'm not going to have it set to dock mode. I quite like it as it is in this case. And you can add a new panel, and you've got auto start apps as well, things that you want to start when the system starts. That doesn't actually change your desktop settings. So. so if you search for wallpaper, you've got this background here, and presumably that's going to let me change the background it is. And you've got all these options here. And they're all quite good. And that's definitely the look and feel. I like to go for. So there we are. Um, that's Fedora all set up and ready to use. And the month on Fedora Budgie Atomic begins. I'll let you know as I get on as I go through the month. But at the moment, I'm quite happy with it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.